of a sudden stratospheric warming, warming that has split our polar vortex in two, which I think is pretty cool. The polar vortex, which forms um, and deepens as the atmosphere loses heat into space in the darkness of the long Arctic winter night, was split in two by massive heating from below. A series of intense storms in the North Pacific intensified a very long wave in the upper atmosphere. Energy on that planet sized wave went upwards from the lower atmosphere around the Himalayas and Tibetan plateau and broke into the stratosphere causing a major sudden warming. It rapidly reversed the strong cyclonic winds in the stratosphere around the poles, creating a central dome, breaking the vortex into two smaller vortices. It's actually quite incredible. Now, what caused this sudden heating? And I'll make sure to put up um, pictures on my site because I forgot. But some pretty major things are taking place on this great good earth. Wonderful pictures so we can see it splitting of course. Major stratospheric warnings have taken place on average every other year over the past 50 years. The physics of these warnings is very complicated. Since 1998 these warnings have been frequent and earlier and earlier in the winter. Previously, major warmings typically happened in February. Over the past decade, they have happened in December and January as well, but this one is exceptional on every count I've seen so far. This stratospheric warning is apparently the strongest ever observed in the first half of January, according to NOAA. No one knows why the number of major warmings is increasing, but a correlation has been made between positive um, sea surface temperature anomalies and active phase of the polar cycle. Even though the sun is very active, but it's active on the side away from us. This year, the sun should be very active. And it is active, it's just we're not getting as many and flares as we really need. And there are large positive sea surface temperature anomalies in the North Indian Ocean and the Northwest Pacific. These things have been happening and of course major stratospheric events like these have large impact on weather so we're going to have to brace ourselves for the next couple days. The warm air in the stratosphere radiates heat and sinks then warms as it sinks by compressional heating. It causes a mound of relatively warm air and high pressure to develop around the poles. The cold air is pushed away from the whole pole. In this case under well, two vortices, which is odd. In the Pacific Ocean, the dramatic interaction of the cold air with normally warm air off the northeast coast of Japan developed one of the strongest North Pacific storms in many years with a central pressure of 932 MB and as low as a major hurricane and modeled high waves of over 60 feet. The swell would generate massive waves on the north and west of the Hawaii Islands today. NOAA's outstanding surf forecaster Pat Caldwell is forecasting 24 foot wave face heights without the amplifying effects of the refraction by the seafloor. 
surf spots. Um, refraction can double these wave heights. 50 foot waves faces are possible on Friday at the outer reefs well all around Hawaii actually. Now the vortices over North America is pushing cold air over the United States. Multiple outbreaks of Arctic air can be expected over the eastern half of the US and Canada over the next 10 days. A winter storm developing now over the southern Appalachians is forecast to bring snow to the DC area tomorrow afternoon. The storm is predicted to intensify over the North Atlantic. The amplifying temperature of the southward displacement vortex over North America is forecast by GPS models to make a snow bomb again. Much like happened in Japan, but it should be hitting Greenland. Huge waves are forecast to hit the Atlantic coast of Europe early next week. Now in February 2009, another major stratospheric warming and polar vortex splitting event happened, unleashing cold air to the U.S., eastern U.S. and Europe. London, England had the heaviest snow in 20 years. Now with England already, well all of Europe already suffering, this is one of those times I think we need to brace ourselves.